Friday afternoon. Welcome back to Midpoint. Former Republican member of the House from Oklahoma's 5th District, columnist and radio host for the Washington Times, Ernest Istook, joining us for another segment on Midpoint. Thanks so much for rejoining us. 3.1 million workers got a pay raise yesterday sure. when the minimum wage went up in 21 states. Is that a good thing? Well, uh, it's certainly from the perspective of those workers, it's a good thing. But from the perspective of people who get pushed out of jobs when the minimum rate wage rises, it's not a good thing. Uh, the, the big challenges with the minimum wage, of course, are that it hurts the most the people who most need work. Uh, those whose job skills are poor, who need a chance to get in on the ground floor, who may not have that much value for the employer, because remember, uh, the employer has to pay extra taxes as well when the minimum wage goes up because he has to pay, pay the uh, uh, employer part of Social Security and such. So if people need to have a starter job, a training job, and they can't get one because the minimum wage is like cutting off the bottom rungs of a ladder, that's the real problem. So sure, for everybody that got a raise from this, they're happy, but why should people go to government to ask for a raise? instead of performing better and making themselves more valuable for their employer. Wouldn't that be a better system? You know, Representative Istook, I know you dealt with a lot of small business owners in your years in Congress. Don't yes. you think it affects them more than maybe the larger corporations? Well, sure. They, they don't have, a, as a percentage of uh, what they're doing, it is a higher percentage of their overall payroll and their overall expenses. Uh, and you, you talk to somebody, for example, that's in the fast food business that uh, has a number of people, you'll find that between that and the impact of Obamacare, where when they employ somebody for what's considered full-time work, they have to pay thousands of dollars more for health insurance as well. Uh, these things have a double whammy of, uh, impact, especially on small businesses and especially on the, the food and the hospitality business. Well, you talked about it, the double whammy, whether it's Obamacare or the increased minimum wage. What can the GOP do in this next Congress to really try to take on the president when it comes to those two issues? The, uh, the challenge on those issues and other things as well is, frankly, the, the obstinacy and the left-wing ideology of President Obama. Uh, he will always say, oh, I'll compromise with anybody. He's not willing to do so. He's only willing to compromise with people who will endorse his basic agenda and make some small compromises. But uh, don't look for any success in changing the ways of President Obama. Now, more likely to have an impact on Obamacare are the court cases that are pending right now, where the U.S. Supreme Court is taking up the case of whether or not these Obamacare subsidies can be granted to the 30-some-odd states that did not set up a state-run exchange. That could have a huge impact on Obamacare. Uh, that and uh, court decisions on the extent of President Obama's authority over uh, illegal immigration, uh, amnesty provisions, and so forth, I think that those will have a greater impact on the president's agenda than the maneuverings of the GOP and the Congress. But don't you feel right now with the majority of states picking up uh, parts of, of the Affordable Care Act that it's going to be a difficult train to turn around? Well, when you say majority of states picking it up, I think you're talking about the Medicaid aspects uh, as opposed to the other insurance purchase aspects. But you're right. That does make it harder to turn around uh, but because, you know, people have this notion that, oh, federal money is free. Federal money is used to bribe state and local officials. There's some $640 billion a year that uh, becomes a part of state budgets that is money that comes from Washington, D.C. It comes with strings attached uh, to tell people you will expand your Medicaid program. You will run your schools a certain way. This is what you have to do on transportation, uh, on, on health care, on a, a whole panoply of things. So the real problem is that the federal government for decades has been bribing state and local officials to do the bidding of Washington, D.C. with these grants of some $640 billion that are, they say, well, my goodness, we can't turn down the federal money. Therefore, we've got to change our ways in whatever ways, uh, change our ways in whatever manner Washington, D.C. wants us to change, or we don't get the money. It's bribery. Well, let's stay with the president right now. Our lead story here on Newsmax is the president says that he would like to abstain from executive actions. Do you take the president at his word when he says that? No, absolutely not. 
President Obama has been playing uh, word games about this. I wrote an article in the Washington Times about this uh, about a month and a half ago, and other people are now beginning to realize most of the things President Obama does are not technically an executive order. Uh, so therefore, he says, I haven't issued that many executive orders. No, but he's issued uh, guidelines, interpretations, memorandum, uh, regulations and rules and so forth that uh, it doesn't matter what you label them. What matters is the impact. And basically, we've got a couple of trillion dollars a year of negative impact on the economy thanks to federal rules and regulations. Representative well, Istook. Change that. You'll just change the labels. And for more on that, you can check out your article on the WashingtonTimes.com website. Thank you so much for your insights okay. on this Friday afternoon. Boy, we covered a lot of bases there, right? You bet. Thanks, Thanks Rick. again. Happy New Year Take to you, care. sir. Happy New Year. When we return, it's important to start the year off on the right foot, but some troubling news for General Motors. It's straight ahead here on Midpoint.